This is an old damaged Pentax ME Super camera that belongs to a friend of mine. We can see that the top of the camera has been hit quite hard and after that the light meter and the electronics have stopped working. There should be LEDs indicating exposure parameters visible when looking through the viewfinder, but nothing happens. To proceed with the repair, I need to disassemble the top part of the camera. I start by opening the battery compartment and removing the batteries. Next, I open the back cover by pulling the film rewind crank. I secure the film rewind mechanism in place with a flat tool and unscrew the crank counterclockwise. I unscrew the ring counterclockwise with a pair of tweezers with a thick tip. A specialized spanner wrench would be a slightly better tool, but this is what I have. Now I unscrew the lever cover by pushing on it and turning it clockwise with a piece of rubber. I unscrew the ring clockwise remove the lever and washers. Now I remove all the screws from the top cover. There are two in the back, two on the top and two on the sides. The screws are not all the same, so keep them organized. The cover should come off easily with almost no friction at all. Now I move to the soldering station to inspect the camera's electronics for damage. Under magnification it is visible that a part of flexible PCB has been damaged mechanically. If we compare the size of the traces to a tip of a match, we can see that the repair will require precision. Usually to repair this kind of damage, the protective layer of the flexible circuit needs to be scraped off and thin jumper wires need to be carefully soldered to exposed pieces of copper. However, if we look at the surroundings, we can see that there are some exposed round soldering pads connected to broken traces. 
Therefore, the easiest way to conduct the repair will be to bypass the broken circuit by soldering wires between larger pads. I am using a small knife type tip and I am setting the temperature to the lower end to avoid any damage to the flexible circuit. I secured the original wires in place with a piece of captain tape. I turn the fume extractor on and apply a bit of soldering flux. Now I'm adding a bit of fresh solder. And I'm attaching a small piece of wire. The solder should look nice and shiny, it needs to flow around the wires and hold them firmly in place. I remove the remaining flux with isopropyl alcohol. Now I'm adding a bit of fresh solder to the next pad. I add some flux and attach the next piece of wire. Now I'm routing the wires so they go as flat as possible and hold them in place with captain tape. I'm soldering the end pieces to the pads on the other side of the circuit. I clean everything up and add some more captain tape to hold the wires in place. And this is how the repaired circuit looks like.
Before I reassemble the camera, I put the batteries back inside and will do a quick test. I push a lever where the shutter button is supposed to be and look into the viewfinder. And some lights light up now, so we can assume that the light meter is working again. I will do further tests when the camera is completely reassembled. To reassemble the camera, I just reverse the steps of the disassembly. There are some small elements that require special care so they won't fall off by accident, especially a small washer that goes under the rewind crank and a small metal pin that is placed under the shutter button. The cover frame also needs to be aligned properly so it won't fall off during reassembly. I put the top cover back on the camera and install remaining parts.
The camera is reassembled and everything seems to be working fine, at least mechanically. The light meter now adjusts the exposure according to how much light the camera sees. Manual mode also works and the shutter speed can be selected with buttons. We can also see that the shutter does indeed get opened for a different amount of time, depending on what was selected, so everything seems to be fixed and the camera can be used again.